1977 in the San Francisco training, Moshe uh, told us that he'd written a new book um, and that he got the galleys of it and that it would be published uh, in the fall. And that book was The Elusive Obvious. And it was through his contact with the people from the Metaphorotica through um, the beginning people of, of NLP that he came in contact with this publisher and they wanted to publish his book, a wonderful book. And so knowing that that was there and knowing that maybe Moshe was, had some time now that he finished writing it, uh, I made an appointment to go down to the house that he was living in with Jerry, with Jerry Carson, uh, in the marina in San Francisco. And I arrived at the appointed time and my, uh, my hidden agenda uh, in all truth was to uh, get him to agree to give me FIs that summer because I'd had FIs in Tel Aviv uh, with him. Um, and, um, and I wanted very much to have a, an FI with him that summer. And I sat down, he was waiting again in the kitchen, waiting for me, opened the door. And we went in the kitchen, had a, a glass of water. And he sat down and I sat down and I uh, had a sum of money that I thought was correct um, to uh, achieve my hidden agenda of, uh, of uh, receiving FIs from Moshe, wherever and whenever, um, not necessarily only in San Francisco. And um, he sat down and I'd laid the money on the table, on the kitchen table, and he, <laughs> he ignored it, didn't say a word about it, didn't even look at it but once. And then he came out and he started to read me word for word the galley to the introduction to the elusive obvious which those of you who may know that book, it has different names in, um, in French and uh, Hebrew and German and Italian. Um, and he started to uh, say to read the galleys and he read the entire, uh, it's not actually the introduction, it's the first chapter. And uh, still I can feel how much it moves me now to the excitement that wells up in me to have sat there and listened to Moshe read to me. Um, I won't give any comparison. I won't even try to say anything. He just simply read to me without stop, without uh, looking at me to find out whether I was uh, receiving or not. I was receiving. And, um, and he knew of my um, having uh, studied uh, with uh, Charlotte Silver and Charles Brooks, who did something they called sensory awareness. And it um, stemmed from a German woman named Elsa Gindler and her partner, Heinrich Jacobi, a, a German who lived in Switzerland. And the first chapter of The Elusive Obvious is about Moshe's first meeting with Heinrich Jacobi. And it's an example, an illustration of how the elusive obvious is, um, it's, it's actually elusive. In other words, it's there. We just can't see it. We can't perceive it. And this first chapter is about um, Jacobi taking Moshe the first time they got together and putting a lamp in front of him and you could be saying, please draw this lamp for me. And Moshe in his engineering uh, studies and his physics studies, he drew a, a perfect lamp, but not this lamp. And, um, and Jacobi didn't say anything, but continued for a whole week and met sometimes many hours a day. Um, to meet Moshe, and Moshe had questions. They would do experiments together. Uh, they exchanged their experiences um, as well. 
Moshe wrote this first chapter as his report about meeting Jacobi, who we then uh, tried to meet a year or maybe even two later, um, and um, they didn't come, didn't happen for whatever reason. But this one meeting, Moshe wrote the chapter to the elusive bodies, and Jacobi has a very full report about meeting Moshe, which one can get through the Gemner Society, the Jacobi Gemner Society in Berlin, in German, maybe in English. But in every case, it's Jacobi's observation about how Moshe participated in their experiments. And it's a very direct report. So as I say, say Moshe read this first chapter, I was, uh, I was very touched, very, very, very touched. And him, too, touched. 